music there. Um, great. Well, welcome uh, back and uh, to the uh, World Travel Market Travel Perspective sessions. This is now our seventh year, and glad to see so many people here to hear our sessions this afternoon. We've got a really good lineup. So, um, what I just wanted to say was, uh, uh, we, we can't do these sessions without support uh, from partners in the industry, and we're very pleased to be working with for Engage uh, this year, who um, are sponsoring all of our sessions. And uh, I'd just like to introduce you now to um, Kath Ludlow, who's co-founder of For Engage, and she's going to be talking to you about uh, their innovative Travel Mapper uh, product. So, Kath, please come to the stage. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here this afternoon and introduce such a great afternoon of uh, social media events. So yes, I'm Kath, co-founder of For Engage. We've been working with social media marketing and targeting for nine years now. In the UK alone, over 20 million of us are logging into Facebook, just one channel, every single day. And it's brands who really understand how to harness those conversations and how to connect with the right audiences on social channels that are gaining the competitive advantage. So we work to identify and target high-value travellers and tourists at four on social media. And we do that by making smarter use of millions of data points to uncover actionable insights and make meaningful connections with your high-value audiences. And that's how we deliver far more effective campaigns. And we're delighted to present at World Travel Market our first annual Travel Trends Report. A copy of this is available to everybody and my colleagues over here at the end can give you a copy or send you a soft copy. So how do we do this? Well, we have developed and trademarked our own unique insights methodology, Mapper 360. It gives our clients unrivaled access, access to many, many forms of data about their target audiences, which we then use to inform our campaigns. So without Mapper, many media targeting, campaign targeting is done on demographic information, and we may know gender, we may know ABC1, we may know your media preferences. But there are many, many more millions of information points that all of us as consumers are sharing online every single day. So just as an example, we worked with an airline. This is 966,000 of their followers around the globe. We took their fan base and we then segmented them into tribes, which we then use to do segmented, targeted, relevant and meaningful campaigns. So you can see here, we've got our luxury vacationers over here on the right. We've got our backpackers tribe and then we've got our business travellers, our frequent flyers. Each of those will be served completely different content at different times, which means that our campaigns on average are between five and ten times more successful in delivering cost per click and cost per acquisition. And you can see here just an example of a persona that we developed out of this tribe insight. So here's Maggie, we developed her for one of our American uh, tourism clients. Maggie is 800 times more likely to use the hashtag holiday planning. She's the one who's planning the family holidays. And we know that she loves the USA because we've analyzed all of her conversations. She's over 7,000 more times more likely to mention Florida. We've got Orlando, we've got Disney in there. We analyze the high opportunity time to reach each of our tribes. In this instance, it's Saturday at 9 o'clock. And the hashtags and the language that she uses. We work with Four Travel to identify partners and influencers. And again, we are able to take this to a granular level. So for this tribe, we know what radio stations she listens to, which charities she supports, and that she is 7,875 times more likely to follow Thompson Holidays. From this, we build up really, really robust insights that inform every aspect of campaigns, from the creative that we, that we put out there to the channels that we choose. We analyze language, emojis, and hashtags so that we can respond and mirror and connect with people in the right way. And just before I hand over to Facebook, I'm going to give you three examples of how we've done this recently with clients. So we worked with one of our tourism authority clients who had really seen a decline in the amount of backpackers that they were attracting to Asia. 
our insights showed that our students were rejecting costly gap years in favour of experiences that delivered a real CV boost. So we worked to create a blogging competition. We targeted creative graduates and we had over 19,000 click-throughs to the competition site amongst those graduates. And we had over 370,000 reach on Facebook alone. We worked with a cruise line who were not seeing conversions from their social channels. We reset their channels, their channel strategy and their content. We saw increases across the board, Twitter, Facebook likes, and crucially, an uplift in YouTube video views. Very expensive content to create. We need to make sure it reaches the right people who then crucially go through and request a brochure. And lastly, in terms of ticket sales, we work beyond travel as well. And we've just delivered a recent campaign for the BBC for one of their shows, just targeting foodies. We had over 32,000 clicks through to buy tickets. So I hope that's just given you a brief overview of how at four we work to make sure that we connect our travel clients with their high value audiences, be they food lovers, be they backpackers, or be they luxury vacationers. And please do pick up your free copy or drop your business card over with our colleagues and we can get that to you today. Thanks very much. Thank you for that, uh, Kath, and for your ongoing support of the Travel Perspective sessions. Um, now, it's impossible to talk about uh, social media without talking about Facebook, you know, billions of users, and, uh, uh, and many of them are interested in travel. Uh, according to the Facebook statistic, two-thirds of UK users are, are interested in travel and posting about travel. And globally, that suggests a market of more than 1.3 billion people. And, and I'm glad to see so many of you here, and you obviously want to know how you can work uh, with Facebook and travel. Uh, and that's without even mentioning its, um, its other subsidiaries, as well as divisions like um, Instagram and, uh, and WhatsApp. And this session is, is looking at how um, the company is helping travel and tourism businesses um, target that um, army of travellers in innovative ways. And I'm very pleased uh, to be joined uh, today by Vanessa Fitzgerald, who's uh, Sales Director for Northern Europe at Facebook. And uh, she also leads the Digital Natives team um, at Facebook for Northern Europe and looks after travel at the, in UK and Ireland. So uh, please welcome uh, Vanessa Fitzgerald to the stage. Good afternoon, uh, Vanessa, and uh, thank you for coming and joining us. I know these uh, Facebook sessions we have, uh, the face-to-faces are always hugely popular, and you can see uh, the faces out there, not to make you nervous or anything, but, uh, um, and I know that um, people in the audience always really want to ask questions of you, and so you can do that using uh, the Slido tool. Uh, if you haven't used it before, you go to slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com, or S-L-I-D-O. Do. You can see at the bottom there, you enter the event code WTMLDN, and you can ask questions through that. Um, so, Vanessa, yes. welcome. And, um, you know, we're, we're all here interested to know about Facebook. But first, I wanted to ask you about that digital native scene. What, what does that do? 
So, so digital natives are any business that started on, in, in the digital world, um, so anything from an online travel agent to, to an e-commerce brand um, to a fintech. So it, it encompasses a kind of a broad array of, um, of different types of clients and I look after the Northern European market for that, so UK and all of the Nordics. Fantastic. So, can you just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how you're working with travel organisations and tourism businesses? Sure. So, I think um, for me, um, that there's a huge opportunity today um, in terms of the travel brands and the opportunity before us. I think the first thing that I think about is, um, you know chasing after people where they are and, and, and working with them in terms of the way that they use the media. So the first thing is to think about it being mobile. People are using mobile. And if you're looking to reach people where they are, it's on mobile. And if you're looking to, to I guess, design for mobile behaviors, it's, it's, it, it has to be mobile first. And so I've been at Facebook seven and a half years and across that time we've seen the shift to mobile and we know that that has happened but what we're seeing right now is that there's this massive shift to video and that's happening faster than we ever could have imagined um, and and to me there's no industry better designed to be able to um to be able to leverage the video platform as the travel industry i mean it, you know travel industry can inspire with destinations across the globe and really whet people's appetites. Um, so I think it's really exciting in terms of that opportunity. People are making that shift. They've shifted to, to video um, and we have to make sure that we're keeping, keeping pace with user behavior. So I see three kind of key shifts. The first one is, is mobile and we're at a turning point in terms of mobile. So um, this is the first time, uh, last year was the first time in the industry that um, over half of all travel journeys are, have been booked on mobile. This is a massive shift. Um, then in terms of video, we're seeing again that adoption is just happening faster than we could have anticipated. So Cisco say that um, 75% of, of all mobile data will be video by 2020. That's only two years away, so it's pretty close by. I just ask the room here, maybe a quick show of hands of anyone who's ever posted an Instagram story video. So, like a lot of the room have done that, and, and you know, and you're not alone. There are 300 million people that do this every single day across the globe. So that's how quickly the shift is happening. It was only one quarter ago that we were saying two. Um, 250 million so it's it's just happening before our very eyes so it's to think about that and then the other the other the third area that I think about is about immersive experiences and making it feel really personal um, in terms of the journey that we're taking users and customers and clients on so whether that's using you know AR or or messaging or VR it's about um, kind of continuing to evolve with the times yeah uh, it was interesting. I was just talking to someone before coming in here, and they said the last time that uh, they were they were speaking here, they were talking about WAP on on mobile. So back in those days, and everyone was saying hey, we're never going to make bookings on uh, on the mobile. And uh, you look at it now, and it's it's incredible. It's shifted so yeah. much. And uh, I mean, the people in this room are going to be thinking, you know, it, yes, they're doing things in that area, but um, obviously you've got so much experience in in those areas about uh, you know how people use that mobile experience. You've got all, uh, you know, this captive market of, of billions of people. Mm. It's, you know, really interesting how, how they can work with you to, to actually get in, in front of those people. And, um, you, you know, in the past, I know we've, we've had these social media sessions for, for several years now. And uh, in, in the early days, it was all about, um, you know, organic reach. And so a lot of yeah. travel companies were running their own social media campaigns organically. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it seems to have moved on from beyond, beyond that now. And um, maybe it's more of a, a paid platform. Uh, I don't know, do, can you sort of talk about that organic yeah. versus paid? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I think it's so, for, for, for me, it's, it's not about an either or, so it's not about organic or paid. It's about really understanding your community that you want to reach and the, and the behaviors um, that, that they have across the platforms. So with paid or organic, we think about three different modes of consumption. So, um, the three different modes that we talk about are um, on the go, which is you know that 
you're checking Facebook 14 times a day, checking people check it, their home page or their home feed on Instagram up to 18 times a day. And it's that sort of quick in the moment, I want to check it, I want to check it now. And it's about capturing them in that moment. We talk about that being about 70%. Um, then there's that lean forward where you're, you know, you're, you're more actively engaged and you, know, you can probably look at some slightly longer form video. And we talk about that being about 20% and then and then there's that lean back so you're you're finally on the train or you're sitting down on your couch for a minute or you just have that 5 minute mo break where you want to be you want something to really capture you and that can be much more emotive um, and that's we talk about that being about 10%. So if I was to put that in context um, a girl, uh, uh, the fearless girl campaign that um, that ran on um, on Wall Street, the statue um, that State Street um, commissioned w would be a great example of how, I could, how you could use the 70, 20, and 10 rule. Um, the 70 would be about you know, highlighting International Women's Day and State Street and using maybe just a 360 video of, of the statue. The, um, they ran a really nice Facebook Live campaign, which would be that lean forward, where it was an emotive piece, Facebook Live, capturing people's reactions to seeing that statue. Um, and you saw mothers bringing daughters there, you saw school groups arriving to see it, and it was, so it was capturing their emotions. Um, and then that lean back is like, what's the backstory? So, how is that, how do they come up with the concept for that statue? You know, why is her hair flicked out? What, why is her stance like this? And, you know, and, and so to get the, the backstory from the sculpture. So you can, see, um, you can see that there are three different ways that you can communicate a very different type of story, but all amounting to the same message um, around this one statue. So it's, it's a great way to think about, you know, how a campaign could look, but it's about making sure that you're thinking smart with your content and that you're using it, you know, as wisely as you can use it. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people in the room will be wanting to do that sort of state street yeah. thing, you know, having something with such impact. It was, it was everywhere, wasn't it? And yeah. um, I mean, how would you start out if you were a, a travel company wanting to, to work on something like that? Would you, would you start small just with um, small Facebook adverts and, or, and move up to something where you're actually working with you in a more um, uh, in a integrated way on a bigger campaign like that? So I think regardless of the budget, I think it's about trying to really understand what your overall business objectives are. I think that's the number one goal. Um, I think, you know, when you're thinking about content, you need to think about the environment that it's running in. So it needs to be relevant, it needs to be engaging to just capture people's imagination. And, and you know, and it needs to be targeted, targeted well, whether that's broad targeting or really a tightly defined target audience. And, and that's the capability that Instagram and Facebook can offer. Um, you know, but it's about storytelling um, so you know it's, it's thinking about the way that you want to unfurl that story and, and make sure that you get that clear creative message across. I think that can be one of the challenges for the travel industry is that you know if you're highlighting a destination there are so many um, incredible <laughs> beach views you can have but if it doesn't speak to your brand and your point of view then that's hard to get the cut through. So it is about having the creative that actually reflects your brand position. Uh, now, I know we have a lot of influencers um, in the room today. And um, what, what opportunities do you give for working with um, influencers these days? I mean, because I know a lot of them are sort of worried about their, their profile on it. Yeah, so, so influencers make up an important part of the overall mix and the overall marketing strategy. And, and you know, we certainly embrace working with influencers. We do a huge amount working um, on, on both Facebook and Instagram. We've probably seen um, the influencers on Instagram just absolutely rocketing forwards. And if you think about um, in terms of, you know, people being passionate about travel, like, like it's, 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 it's a, um, a sector that so many people post about and get excited about. So even if you look at, say, the amount of hashtags that we see for adventures, like 38 million hashtags, hashtag adventure, hashtag road trip, 25 million, and even a million just hashtagging staycation. So people can get really, really excited about, um, about what that opportunity is and people get or feel really emotive about talking about their, their own travel. So influencers fit into that whole jigsaw piece around that. Well, um, I know there's a lot of talk about um, Facebook at the moment, particularly in the light of um, you know, things that have been going on the other side of the Atlantic um, about fake news, but also about uh, fake 
accounts. Uh, you know, you look at those numbers and you yeah. think, you know, are, are they all real people? And I think a lot of people will be thinking, you know, if I'm spending money with you, how are you dealing with that? Yeah. Mm. So the first thing I'll say is, this is complicated. You know, we, you know, this has not been done before. So we, but we take our responsibility, our responsibility unbelievably seriously. And we work around the clock to make sure that we are acting um, and taking steps to reduce the number of fake accounts and to work to eradicate them, although it is very complicated. So everyone wants accurate information and we want to give everyone accurate information. So here's what we're doing. So we're building out our technical systems ongoing um, and ever evolving to be able to reduce the number of fake accounts and fake ads that people see. So there are a number of steps that we've taken in the past year alone. So we're actively going after false accounts. So people will see fewer ads and fewer posts from accounts that have um, news of any kind that has been seen as, as false news. Second thing is we, we've got third party checkers. So we're not marking our own homework. We've got third party checkers working with us and helping us to identify these accounts so that we reduce them down. On Instagram, we're also making improvements. In the last couple of months, what we've done is we've increased our ability to be able to do autom automation um, to identify fake accounts as they're being registered so that we, we disallow those. And so we're working tirelessly. Um, in this very complex um, area of our business to, to ensure that we keep the community safe and we expose um, the correct information to people. Um, I guess that's what we're doing. But um, you know, you talked about video there, and I mean, they, those are incredible statistics. And yeah. I, I know a lot of people are interested in, in viewability and, you know, how you actually sort of monitor how much people are actually looking at those. Yeah. But what, what work are you doing in that area? So... This is, this is something, you know, what people talk about around viewability is, you know, what is a view and what do we consider as viewable? So we think about three different areas around this. Um, two of them are very straightforward and the industry agrees on them. One is just more complex. So the first one is the ad must be seen by a human. So again, we don't mark our own homework here. We work with Moat to, um, to ensure that, uh, that that's viewed. So 99.6% um, of our ads are viewed by, um, by humans. The other 0.4% are what we call spiders who just check that impressions are being served correctly. So that's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, the other one is, the second one is the, uh, an ad has to enter the viewport. So the MRC standard is 50% of the ad has to be in the viewport for a minimum of two seconds. Again, that's pretty straightforward and we work to those, you know, we absolutely stand over those guidelines as well. What's interesting is um, that Mark Pritchard from um, P&G is, um, is working to the MRC standard in terms of his buying process for P&G come the end of this year. So they're a client that's unbelievably meticulous in terms of the way they measure things. So um, that's, that's a great kind of seal of approval in terms of how he's thinking about viewability. The third area is duration, and this is the one that's more complex. Um, what our ambition is to give clients the flexibility to buy in a way that best suits them. So we don't want to just work to one standard. Um, you know, if you're a client who's looking for a very clear um, ROI, looking to sell a product, you might just want a short viewability. So if I think of yesterday, I saw in my home feed on Instagram, Oscar de la Renta, really nice, two second, almost cinemagraph um, piece of content in my news feed. Just really smart, a, a quick twist in an outfit, and that's all that it was. And um, so that's perfect to deliver one message. But if somebody wants to get a more immersive experience when people are in that lean back mode and build something longer form, we also want to allow for that. So we don't give a one size fits all. We, we allow people um, the flexibility to buy in a way that feels right for their business and their brand. Great. Um, now, before we sort of move on to asking for the audience for some questions, and I hope you've got some good ones, um, I, I just wondered if you could just talk, talk us through some innovative ways that um, advertisers are working with, with you in the travel sector. Yep. Um, I mean, we're seeing, we, you know, we've seen a huge number of clients um, right across the industry doing some really innovative work, whether that's on Instagram, whether it's through video, whether it's um, just, you know, whether it's a mobile first strategy. I think that we've seen some really incredible work across across the platform. 
Um, in terms of mi vi mobile video, we've seen that grow by over 500% in the last two years alone. So um, we've seen some great examples. So we've seen Carnival Cruises, um, who ran a Canvas campaign that had over 7 million views and delivered against their return on ad spend for them. Visit Scotland saw 19% lift when they ran um, a video uh, campaign for 19% lift for consideration to go and visit Scotland. So we've seen some incredible work there. Um, we're seeing some really nice work on Instagram stories with Qantas are doing some fantastic work. Um, we're also seeing Airbnb continuing to embrace uh, new opportunities and get that first first players' advantage um, in terms of how they're thinking about Instagram stories. I think they're the kinds of things that we're thinking about. And then looking into the future, it's about, you know, it's about how you're using messaging and making that a personal experience for, um, for, for end users or for your clients. Yeah. Um, what, what about small businesses? Because there are you know, an awful lot of small businesses in the room. I mean, how, how would you um, advise them in that, you know, they don't have Airbnb marketing budgets or Carnival Cruises? budgets? I think you can be really smart with a very small budget. I think you need to, again, back to kind of understanding your your business objectives. So what are you trying to achieve? Who are you trying to reach? And what are some of the smart ways that you can reach them? I mean, literally, people can like use their mobile phone to build some really smart creative. We've seen small businesses doing that right across the globe and some beautiful creative, you know, using things like boomerang or different layouts. You know, we offer some really nice tools that are free um, on the platform to be able to help build some really smart creative. So it's about, it's about understanding what you're trying to achieve and then thinking of some small and straightforward steps to help you get there. Yeah, I like, I like some of those things that people do with Facebook Live, you know, the, the immediacy of it all where you have, um, you know, a some, some travel influencer perhaps um, you know just showing what they're seeing you know they might be in you know Machu Picchu or something and they're just sort of showing the uh, the, the gate of the sun at, at dawn or something like that and just putting that on Facebook live and I, I love all that but um, you know th there, are, there are lots of ideas out there for travel businesses I think who can use similar ideas to that for themselves you know and perhaps finding the interesting people in their organizations who can tell good stories and it comes back to what you said before isn't it you know, the, the whole sort of storytelling yeah. thing you know yeah. identifying things that people are going to really find find intriguing and make them want to click through and book something. Yeah. yeah, so it's about going back to the basics and trying to yeah build up storytelling and not trying to overcomplicate it, but thinking, how can I do this on, on my budget, which is, you know, maybe a shoe, like on a shoestring rather than on a, on a big, bigger brand budget. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know that uh, you'll want to ask some questions, so I don't know if we can turn the Slido screen on at this point and just see what uh, people have come up with. Um, and we need to have it on the monitor as well, because otherwise we won't be able to see it. <laughs> so, um, yes, we can't see that. So, here we go. Just having a technical problem here. Sorry about that. There we go. So, um, you know, one of the most popular questions there, people can see it, about the long-term strategy regarding um, travel content. Um, are you planning to integrate providers like we saw in the in that intro video? So, so I think we continue to evolve our product. We continue to think of new and, and innovative ways for us to be able to reach our, um, you know, work with our partners. Um, we want to continue to work with the partners in this room to be able to to reach our our target audience. It, in terms of how we're integrating, I think we what we do is we open our you know so APIs can plug into our system. Um, I think that that's you know that's how we continue to I guess work with our partners. Yeah. Okay. Um, so F Facebook advertising. Um, you know, there's a question there about um, how difficult it is to, to speak to somebody. I mean, you know, you, you deal with travel companies all, all the time. Uh, how do people get around that if they do have any issues? I mean, do they, do they, come to, do they need an account team to, to come to, have the account managers, or is it all sort of you know, frequently asked questions, that sort of thing? So we look after, you know, a large number of businesses across the globe and um, in com in comparatively speaking we're quite a, s a nimble team I would say um, and we what we try to do is best fit 
the right solutions for the right type of clients. And so a lot of, um, a lot of the clients that we work with would, would best benefit from a really fast turnaround to a question um, and have that as, as a tran more of a transactional um, experience with, you know, with an online solution to you. But we have teams, we have um, sales teams that help um, at every level of uh, complexity and, um, you know, and budget to be able to answer things in person. Um, so if there are people in the room that, you know, wanted to give like their card to me, I can bring that to the right team to be able to help answer them. We work with some of the largest brands in the world as well to be able to ensure that their, um, that their marketing budget is working as effectively as it can for them. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody's asked, how can companies work with you? I mean, you know, you see all these great Facebook campaigns when they sort of come out when you're first sort of piloting uh, um, a feature, for example. Is that something that they can get involved with? You know, an innovative travel company, could they come to you and say, we've got this great idea, um, w let's work together on it? So we call these the new shiny things. Um, and the new shiny things can be really um, effective for, for clients. But, you know, there are a lot of uh, concepts that we've built and then deprecated because they haven't been as effective. And so it's a risk that businesses take when they work with us on what we call like an alpha test or a beta test um, as we're rolling out new, new products. So we carefully select the types of clients that we think will help us learn and continue to, it, to iterate so that we can then roll out a product or a solution um, to the full uh, spectrum of our clients that it will be relevant for. Um, so it's a double-edged sword sometimes working with us on those beta products because it's not always, it's not always easy. They're the people who have to help us road test things and um, there can be a lot of work involved in those. So, but by all means, we're always looking for interesting clients to work with where we think that the solution would be right for the client and to help us learn and continue to iterate. Sure, and I know this is not necessarily your, your area, but um, Instagram timeline. You know, obviously, it's become more sort of Facebook-like um, over time you know, in terms of you know, the ordering of the things that you, you see in there. Is that, yeah. um, you know, have, have people expressed concerns about that? Is it you know, something that you know about and can talk, to, talk about? So that is not an area that I know about, <laughs> I will tell you. But, um, but I guess what, you know, what our philosophy is, is about you know, bringing the world closer together, about building community, and about, you know, all Always putting users first so um, you know and then when when things are working well for users we then introduce the, the, an, an advertising side to it for businesses to be able to connect with their user base or their client base and um, so it, you know if the product evolves we will test it and road test it to ensure that it works well for people Great. Um, now the, uh, I'm interested in this one what, what point is a Facebook ad most effective particularly in travel you know if you're is it before you travel to a destination while you're in destination? Is it after, after the travel has happened? I, look, I think it depends on the type of client. You know, uh, like if you're an airline uh, and you're at the destination, it's possibly too late unless you want to change your, your, your carrier for the way home. I think it's about bringing people through that funnel. Um, so everything from kind of the ideation stage, and we know that it takes about between 43 and 45 days for people to actually um, go on that journey from, from the ideation through to actually booking. Um, and so it depends what area of the industry you're working in as to when it's kind of how long is a piece of string. So it depends, um, I guess, on the type of client you are within the industry as to when. But I think, you know, I think it is about that journey and, you know, it's, it's building brand awareness right the way through to the purchase point. And, and then, you know, having lifetime value as part of your overall strategy so that, you know, it, you don't likely want a single purchase. You, you know, you want to build loyalty and build repeat business. And so um, I guess that's, that's part of the thought process. But again, it's back to what are your business objectives? Um, there's an interesting question there as well about, um, you know, the effectiveness of um, package promotion. So if you, uh, you know, should you be just selling a package and a price or are you using more sentiment and, uh, you know, the more, more bigger brand sort of promotions? Uh, which ones work best? I mean, do you have the statistics on how that works in, in Facebook? So, so the, it, again, it's a, it's down to the individual client. So, it, it you know what we would say is like there's there's a place for building that awareness and building that um, that kind of brand equity, um, but then there's also a place for that 
price an item piece. And so it just depends on whereabouts on the funnel, on that marketing funnel, you, you want to position yourself. So we wouldn't say, I would say it's definitively not an either or. And what we've seen is the brands that would have started out working with us in much more of a DR type performance uh, model have probably lent into brand um, a brand focus now. And then equally brand clients also you know, focus on, on actually the transactional piece as well. So it's, it's, it's not an either or, it's, it's thinking about what, what stage your business is in and how can we best deliver against that. Well, incredibly, our half an hour has already run out. And I know there are lots of questions still there, but, um, you know, maybe you could take one or two of them afterwards with the audience if, uh, if you've got time. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you for joining us um, again, uh, Vanessa. It's been great to, to have you, in a, and thanks for answering all our questions. And uh, please show your appreciation. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you very much.